Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everybody. We're going to get started momentarily. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Stony Brook University Undergraduate Admissions Virtual Session with the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences. I'm Amanda Mills, Assistant Director of Admissions. Congratulations to those of you who have been accepted to Stony Brook this year. Uh, just to put in perspective how impressive that is, this year we've received just about 50,000 applications for first year admission, and we expect a class of about 3,600 first year students. So again, congratulations on all of your hard work um, and good luck with your final decision uh, making process. And for those of you that are joining us and are just beginning your college search, we wish you the best of luck for an exciting journey. Explore the admissions section of our website for additional virtual or in-person visit options. And the summer tour schedule will be updated starting in May. For today's session, please use the Q&A feature to ask questions about today's topic special programs in the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences. And this session is being recorded and will be available on the admissions YouTube page soon. Now, please join me in welcoming our first speaker, Dr. Kurt Bresch, Director of Semester by the Sea and the Marine Science Club Advisor. Kurt. Great, thank you, Amanda. And good e evening, everyone. Welcome to our presentation tonight. We'll be discussing special programs the focus will be on experiential education within SOMAS. So I think the first thing to do is really define what experiential education is. So Amanda, next. Thank you, Amanda. So on the slide, we can see various types of experiential education over on the left. When you're at Stony Brook, you're going to be taking your foundational courses, your diversity in the curriculum courses, and the courses that are required for your major. But your education at Stony Brook and in SOMAS should be so much more than just coursework in the classroom or perhaps uh, during some online courses. While you're here, you want to build your resume. You want to get strong letters of recommendation from professors, advisors, and mentors that you're working with. And you want to be uh, prepared to go out into the job field once you graduate. So again, much more than just classroom work. So let's talk about what experiential education is and what we offer within SOMAS to help you um, get some experiential education. So experience, experiential education can be anything from research, so getting involved in a research lab while you're an undergraduate, and we really encourage that within all divisions in SOMAS, and there are many opportunities for you to do that, to work with a professor and to work with graduate students, and to try some research ideas that you might have, um, or to try on some research uh, topics that you might be interested in. We also have a lot of project-based courses that gets you some hands-on experience, experiences designing projects, collecting data, analyzing that data, testing hypotheses. We have a lot of field-based courses at our various facilities around Long Island. We have the main campus. We have the Flax Pond Marine Laboratory near main campus. We have the Southampton Marine Station, which you can see in the picture kind of behind me. Um, we also have scuba courses. You can get certified in scuba. You can take several courses and apply those skills. We have a lot of study abroad experiences at many countries around the world. We have a lot of internships with partner organizations uh, here on the island and elsewhere as well. And internships are a way in which you can try on a, a job, basically, or a career. You can kind of get a sense of the type of job that you might want to have as a career later on. You can get involved in the culture in that particular field or that particular job or career. Um, so internships are a great way, again, to try out some ideas that you might have about types of careers. We also have jobs within SOMA. So we have some training that you can do, and I'll get into this in just a, a few slides, and you can actually get paid as well. If you're interested in teaching, many of our courses work with undergraduate teaching assistants. So you'll help other undergraduates. These are typically for introductory courses. You'll help them learn the material, improve their study skills, understand the concepts, and so on. We also have the Immersive Semester by the Sea program down at the Southampton campus, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and student clubs as well, which is another type of experiential education, which uh, uh, Dr. Ryder will talk about soon. All right, so again, lots of opportunities, and we're going to discuss all of these tonight. Um, 
these experiential education opportunities within SOMAS. Over on the right, I mentioned this already, why you should seek out experiential education while you're here. Um, again, you can apply concepts that you learn in the classroom. You can um, apply those concepts to uh, sampling equipment that you're using out in the field, um, hypothesis testing in the laboratory or in the field as well. You can build your resume. A lot of these experiential education exper experiential education opportunities, they look great on your, on your resume. Um, you can network in your field as well, make contacts for future employers, internship opportunities, and so on. Once you get plugged into some of these experiential education opportunities, you'll learn about a whole slew of other scholarships, internships, jobs, and so on. Once you open that door, um, it's a great way to learn about you know, furthering your experiential education. You also get exposed to a lot of new ideas, not just from your college professors, but by other professionals in the field, colleagues, uh, your peers as well. As I mentioned, getting those letters of recommendation is really important for getting a job after graduation. Confirming your decisions within your career or perhaps closing some doors. Again, internships, research, many of these experiences, they're a great way to, as I said, test something out. And if you end up, if it turns out that you don't like it, that's okay too. You can close that door behind you and focus on something else. So Again, all of this is leading towards your graduation, getting a job afterwards or going to graduate school. And again, these experiential education opportunities, they look great on your resume. And this is what employers and potential advisors in grad school really want to see. Okay, next slide, Amanda, please. All right, so we're gonna talk about various opportunities and research in our divisions within SOMAS. So again, within SOMAS, we have three divisions. There's the Marine Division, there's the Atmospheric and Ocean Sciences Division, and there's the Sustainability Division. So I'll focus on the Marine Research Division. We have a list here of just some of the many opportunities that you have to get involved with our professors and graduate students doing real marine research. So again, I'm not going to read through all of them, but you can kind of just scroll through there with your eyes and see that we have a diversity of projects that our faculty are exploring. Everything from deep sea zooplankton fish identif identification out in the deep ocean or shallow water to dolphin foraging behavior, seagrass ecosystem relationships, lots of harmful algal bloom research, um, opportunities in aquaculture in New York. We've got a marine disease lab. Again, you can look through this list on your own, but you'll see that the research that we offer within SOMOS runs the gamut of uh, nearly any topic you can think of, a uh, broad topic within uh, marine research. And again, as you're doing this, you're not only working in our laboratories, but you have, have opportunities to do research on our research vessels, like the Sea Wolf out of Port Jefferson Harbor, or the many vessels that go out of um, our Southampton facility. We also, as I said, have the Flax Pond Lab and the Southampton Lab as well. Both have running seawater systems that allow you to conduct a lot of experiments exploring these topics in our facilities. Okay, next slide, Amanda, please. Okay, atmospheric research. So this is, again, another division that we have in, in SOMAS. And we have several faculty members who work very closely with undergraduates. And they get an undergraduate again involved in the list of topics that we see uh, here. So we've got a radar truck that our faculty use with the undergraduates. We often release weather balloons and collect data um, under all conditions, as you can kind of see here in that picture in the, on the top right there. Um, we go out on ferries and vessels and collect data. We use drones. We have some faculty that actually fly planes and, and look at air quality. Um, and we have a lot of laboratory facilities in which you can analyze the, the data that you're collecting out there in the field, working with the, the faculty. All right, next slide, please, Amanda. The Atmospheric Division also has facilities that allow uh, forecasters and meteorologists to um, actually go in front of a screen and produce some uh, some forecasting. Um, so they work with the Stony Brook um, News, and often this leads to internships with local news organizations as well. So again, you get some on-campus experience with our own kind of Stony Brook uh, internal um, uh, news broadcasting programs. But again, it often leads to jobs, internships um, elsewhere. So fantastic facilities if you're interested in becoming a on-screen kind of uh, meteorologist, a forecaster uh, within atmospheric sciences. Okay, next will be Dr. Ryder to talk about opportunities and research in the sustainability division. Oh, you're mute, muted, Tara. 
Sorry about that. Hello, everyone. Uh, so within the sustainability studies division in which we have majors in sustainability, environmental design policy and planning, coastal environmental studies, we have a large emphasis like the other majors do on getting experiential learning and that includes research opportunities. Um, so within our majors, uh, we require either an internship or a research uh, part uh, credits for your to complete your major. So within sustainability studies, I have had students who have um, done research both on campus with faculty, but also outside of campus, um, both on Long Island and in other parts of New York and actually the US. You can see some of the examples here. We've had students who are working within climate action. So looking at um, public advocacy, they're doing research on sharks in our marine environment. Um, they're also looking at how changes in policy have impacted our local communities and um, various policies at local, regional, and national levels. Um, so again, research is a, an important chance to get an idea of what are you interested in doing. Uh, Amanda, next slide, please. So another component of this experiential learning is having project-based courses within the sustainability studies field. Um, we have an ecotoxicology lab that is uh, typically known as the worm lab. And in it, students design and do experiments studying the impact of toxins such as Roundup have on both the soil and the organisms within the soil. And they have gotten several of their papers published over the years. We also have a capstone class that's uh, our integrated collaborative systems class. And students have done projects um, that have been uh, writing grants in order to create, design, and ultimately install butterfly and a pollinator garden here on campus. Uh, students this semester currently are focused on natural and living shorelines, so dealing with issues of storm surges, and they will be dealing directly with policymakers out on the east end of Long Island to help incorporate these ideas into the laws um, and into the initiatives. So they get the chance to really see their projects take root and ultimately make an impact on the local communities. Next slide, please. So back to Kurt. Okay, great. Thanks, Tara. Um, before I start talking about field-based courses, let me just wrap up with the, the research. So as Dr. Ryder said, you can earn credits um, by getting involved in research. So again, not only are you exploring potential career paths and ideas, but you are earning credits that'll fulfill your kind of full-time student status. So we really hope that you'll consider getting involved in research with our, our various labs or professors and graduate students. Um, and often the earlier you do that, the, the better within all divisions, because if you get involved as a freshman or perhaps a sophomore, by the time you're a junior or senior, you often have a lot more responsibility within that research group. And that can lead to you know, exploring your own hypotheses, designing your own experiments, doing a capstone project, doing an honors thesis. So please consider, again, when you arrive at Stony Brook, you're going to be busy from day one, but please consider um, making some connections with uh, faculty and graduate students and considering getting involved in a, a research program. Okay, the next topic we want to talk about in terms of experiential learning is field-based courses. And this is something both Dr. Ryder and I love to do. Um, in fact, we, we co-teach a course, uh, Coastal Cultural Experience, which you can see on the list here. So we offer a lot of field-based courses. Um, primarily at the Southampton campus, but there are also some up at the main campus, such as Long Island Marine Habitats. And the idea is that we get you out of the classroom and out into the field. And field in this instance doesn't mean a, a, a discipline within a career, but literally out in the field. So into the forests, um, on the water, around the water, and often in the water with some of our courses. So again, there are several that are listed here, uh, again, mostly at the Southampton campus that you can see. The exception is the Long Island uh, Pine Barrens, um, shown here in the top left, there's an image there. Uh, but the Pine Barrens are a wonderful kind of a, a habitat that we have here, kind of mid-island and uh, moving towards the east end. 
Uh, wonderful uh, preserves, uh, replenishes our, aqua, our, our, our aquifer here for our drinking water on Long Island. Uh, wonderful trails to explore for biking and, and hiking. And we have faculty members that take students out into the system um, to understand the history of the preservation of the Pine Barrens and the importance of the Pine Barrens as well. The other courses that you see listed here are primarily marine kind of oriented courses. Um, Coastal Cultural Experience, again, that's the course that Dr. Ryder and I co-teach on Fridays. That's a maritime culture course. So we actually take students out on Fridays in the fall and we visit uh, important maritime sites, primarily on the east end of Long Island. So Sag Harbor Whaling Museum, the Montauk uh, Point and Lighthouse, the Fire Island Lighthouse, we take a whole day and go up to the Mystic Seaport across the Long Island Sound. We actually have a kayaking trip. Um, we spend a few hours kayaking up in North Sea Harbor, pull out on the beach, have a little cookout around a bonfire. Uh, Dr. Ryder gives a few little mini lectures there as we do during the kayaks. Um, but as you can imagine, we are literally in the field there and on the water and sometimes even in the water if students don't manage to stay in their kayaks. Um, Biological oceanography, physical oceanography, experimental marine biology, ichthyology, these are also courses we offer at Southampton that have a very intensive field component to them. Now, when you're taking these field-oriented classes, you're getting exposed to the habitats directly, the organisms, the, the natural communities there, the cultural sites. You're often interacting with docents or rangers, so you're able to expand your career network and, again, pick their brains about jobs or internship opportunities. You're also being trained to use sampling gear and techniques. So this, again, can build your resume and make you more appealing for future employers or for graduate school. Next slide, please. Okay, so we also offer kind of a scuba program. And this is something new in the last few years that we're, we're very proud of. So um, within SOMAS, Students can get certified in scuba during the fall semester and the spring semester. Um, so you'll get certified, which lasts for a lifetime. And also you can earn credits during the fall and spring while getting certified. The Marine Science Club also offers certification during the summer. You can't earn credits there, but you can get certified. So again, lots of opportunities to um, get this very important skill that a lot of marine scientists uh, want for, again, employment or graduate school. And a lot of folks who even aren't marine scientists necessarily full-time, they want to have this skill so they can explore the underwater world throughout their life as they travel. Um, so again, once you get that certification card, whenever you're traveling, you're certified to dive typically at any facility that you go to or any destination. All right, so the second course that we offer is scientific diving, uh, another Southampton course. This is in the fall, and this is a course that trains you to use um, scientific skills underwater. So you lay out transects, you'll learn some new safety skills, you'll learn how to collect data. Again, this makes you very employable in the future for many jobs and also makes you very appealing for graduate programs that require this skill to do marine ecology work or, or other types of research. The third course, um, and I'm just going to mention here, Dr. Ryder will talk about it because it is a study abroad course as well, but this is Tropical Marine Ecology. It's offered in Jamaica, and I need to edit this slide because we actually are starting to think about taking students to the South Pacific again. We did this a few years ago. We actually went to Fiji. I say we. Um, I'm not actually teaching this course. It's Dr. Peterson and Dr. Warren, both from the Southampton facility, and I was just kind of a hanger on her. Um, but I had a great time interacting with the students in Fiji a few years ago. This last year, we actually went to the Solomon Islands to check out another potential field site in the South Pacific. So when you arrive here at Stony Brook um, during your four years, you could have an opportunity to go to perhaps both Jamaica and perhaps the South Pacific or one or the other. The last uh, the last program that we have here under SCUBA is coral conservation. This is a relatively new one. We think it may be offered again this early summer, uh, but it's a chance to look at coral and coral conservation in the Red Sea. Okay, I'll hand this off to Dr. Ryder again for the next slide, Amanda, for study abroad programs. So with study abroad, you can experience new places and cultures. You get to gain a a global perspective at the same time as earning credits that will help you complete your degree. And travel abroad allows you to develop skills that are incredibly valued by 
uh, both the professional fields as well as thinking about graduate school because you get skills like intercultural communication, adaptability, and problem solving. Now, Stony Brook as a whole has programs and exchanges to over 100 different countries, but within SOMAS, we have several that will help fulfill the requirements within our major. Um, we have a program, and I, I'm going to put it right out there and say I'm completely biased about the Ireland and England program as the director of that program, but we spend four weeks in Ireland and England studying environmental history and contemporary environmental issues and policies. Um, so we explore how Ireland and the British Isles are, have dealt with environmental problems in the past, how those problems play out today, and what is the direction we can go. Um, we also have through uh, SOMAS faculty, a program to Tanzania. Again, I have some bias on this one, having actually gone as a faculty member last summer, and their students are looking at the relationship between environment and health, and they'll get to go um, to several different parts of Tanzania, including uh, three to four days of going on safari where you're gonna see elephants and uh, cheetahs. I saw a leopard. I saw, I don't even know how many thousands zebras. Um, so it's an incredible experience and it really does open you up to what people around the world are experiencing. We also have a winter program that goes to Cuba, um, looking at the environmental humanities and looking at the, the various kind of issues that are happening um, within that island. Um, and as we mentioned before, we also have the winter program to Jamaica where you're studying tropical ecology and who wouldn't want to be in Jamaica in January getting this chance to snorkel or to scuba while you're down there. And these experiences help to give you more hands-on experience, not only in your field, but also in this kind of larger um, global sense. And so we really do strongly encourage our students to participate in these programs. And as I said, they do help you move along your major's path if you think about planning them into your um, program. Uh, Amanda, next slide. Thank you. So one of the things that we've talked quite a bit about is internships. As I said, we have a, a huge emphasis on experiential learning and Internships are um, one of the ways to earn credits for your major. And you can do internships. Um, I've had students do internships every single summer. Some of them are doing them during the semester. So you have a lot of different um, times when you can do an internship. Um, you can earn credits. Some internships, you can even get paid. Um, as Dr. Brush said, it is a chance to to try out a job, to figure out, is this what you really want to do? Um, and ultimately it helps you to build a network. Um, we do post internship opportunities on our various um, community pages that we have with our students through faculties, but students are also welcome to find an internship. So if they are from someplace and have worked with an organization, they can help set up an internship opportunity that way. And what you see on the screen is a very small number of internship organizations that our students have worked with, ranging from the Atlantic Marine Conservation Society um, to and the Long Island Aquarium to the MTA and the National Weather Service to working with the various towns on Long Island and beyond Long Island. Next slide. So some other opportunities that you might want to take advantage of um, while at Stony Brook and a SOMA student <clears throat> are being an undergraduate teaching assistant. And I mentioned this earlier. Um, this is a very powerful experiential learning opportunity if you, especially if you want to go into teaching. Um, it's also a way that you can kind of cement the concepts in your in your mind. I think those of us who teach probably would all agree that one of the best ways of learning something, learning a concept is actually try and teach it to, to somebody. Um, so we have opportunities, again, with many of our intro courses for undergraduates to get involved and work with their peers. Um, typically, this is when the student is a junior or a senior, but again, they can um, get some teaching experience as well as earn credit while they're doing it. 
We also have employment in all of our divisions um, or some opportunities for employment within all of our divisions. And there's just a few uh, that I listed up here. Um, down at the Southampton Marine Station, and I think even on the Sea Wolf on occasion, you can work as a deckhand, so you can go out during field trips with other students and deploy equipment, help retrieve the equipment, bring the, the vessels in and out of the dock. Um, and it's not just with the college groups, but we also have a lot of visiting school groups, you know, from elementary school students to high school students, uh, to outside organizations that come out to Southampton, especially and do some field trips, and you can work as a deckhand there. Um, and then again, the research labs, many of them will actually pay students to do research uh, during the summer or sometimes even during the uh, school year. So again, both very powerful experiential learning opportunities here. Next slide, please. Okay, so I, I mentioned the semester by the sea earlier, so let me explain what this is. Um, so a lot of our students in the Marine Division um, um, as well as the sustainability division, sometimes come to Stony Brook and SOMAS because they'd like to do the semester by the sea. So uh, to be clear, this, this is a Stony Brook SOMAS program. So participation does not require any additional application. Um, as a Stony Brook student, you fairly simply take your courses at the Southampton campus, the Stony Brook Southampton campus. It's designed for juniors and seniors. So we want our students to get the prerequisites out of the way first because they're all upper, upper level courses within this program. We want you to fulfill your um, diversity and education uh, re requirements up at the main campus first as well. But once you are a junior or a senior, you can come down to the Southampton campus and take one course, two courses. We really try and encourage you to take your full semester at Southampton though. Um, you can live in the residence halls at Southampton, or you can commute in from off campus if you live off campus, um, but you can do your full semester down there in the fall and or the spring. And sometimes we'll have students that spend time down there. They spend a fall, a spring, and sometimes a second fall down there as well, and sometimes even a second spring down there, depending on what courses they select and if they're involved in the research labs at, at Southampton. So again, this is designed to be a very, very immersive experience. It's typically a small cohort of students that are down there. So while each semester we have about 80 or so students taking one class or more at Southampton, in the fall, we usually have about 20 to 28 students living in the residence halls. And in the spring, typically about maybe 12 or 15 students living in the residence halls within the, the Semester by the Sea program. There are, are other programs at Southampton, at the Southampton campus, but they're both graduate programs. One's a, a suite of health sciences programs, and the other is an art program, a creative writing program. So again, we say that it's very immersive, um, depending on what courses you select, you can expect to be out in the field. So again, in the water, on the water, around the water, as much as maybe even three or four times a week, depending on what courses you're, you're taking. So again, we encourage you to come down to the Southampton campus and participate in the Semester by the Sea program. Once you arrive, you're gonna be having lots of info sessions. Um, I am up at the main campus every year a couple of times talking with you about this, helping you prepare. SOMAS's undergraduate advisor, uh, Nancy Black, will also help you prepare for this so you can fit it in in your junior or senior year. So uh, please look forward to coming down and joining us for the Semester by the Sea at Southampton. Um, next slide, please. And I think Dr. Ryder is going to take this one. So we do recognize that one of the important components of college isn't simply the experience of in the classroom in that kind of academic setting, but is the, the, the social aspect. And so there are a variety of clubs, obviously, across the entire university, but many of them are actually related and really our students in SOMAS are involved in these. And you'll see that there is an element of socializing, um, but there's also an element of activism that's going on. It is a way for students to create peer networks so they can ask each other about classes. They can share, share you know, the various opportunities they've had. And it's also about building a network within your field because your peers will become your professional colleagues as you go forward. Um, so you see a couple of the clubs that we have. We have the Marine Science Club just this past weekend. They organized a beach cleanup, but they also do things, as they said on here, they have a Marine Geek movie nights. Um, they also help to get students involved in research. Um, we have the Environmental Club. Um, they do a lot of 
elements of again working within the environment they they are running a cleanup next week in honor of earth day they work at raising awareness at local and regional events um, about the various environmental issues we're facing today we have the meteorological club um, who's you know anyone who's interested in the weather and the phenomena and one of the things to keep in mind is that these clubs are open to anyone so you don't have to be a marine science major or even a minor. It could just be something you're really passionate about. And that's a, a, a really good way to get larger conversations going and to recognize, you know, everyone brings something to the table. We have um, Sunrise, which is a advocacy club. And we have SWIMS, which is the Society for Women in Marine Science. And so within SWIMS, we have a monthly swimspiration series um, where uh, women in various um, parts of their marine science uh, journey from, you know, recent undergraduates um, to people at the very pinnacle of the, the their, with their PhD who are chief editors of journals will talk to our students. They're also involved in doing research. Currently, they're going to be working on an eelgrass project. So it's another way to get involved that is fun, but at the same time, you're learning and quite often making a difference in your local community. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, I think that wraps up our presentation. Um, both, uh, I think we should have said this at the beginning, perhaps, but um, both uh, Dr. Ryder and I are senior lecturers uh, within SOMAS. Um, so we were actually hired to teach, um, and we both love these immersive experiences, both teaching them and getting the students involved um, in the many ex uh, experiential opportunities that we offer within SOMAS. So I think we'll hand it over back to Amanda. She wants to run the Q&A session. Hi, everybody. So we have some great questions. Uh, some were pre-submitted, some are uh, live questions this um, evening. Um, and just to kind of get us started, we had a question about um, graduate pathway opportunities. So I guess either direct graduate school admission pathways or, you know, outside of Stony Brook. So you have a couple of different avenues. Um, we do have a few uh, combined um, pathways that you will see. So with environmental studies, you can also do a combined pathway into the marine conservation and policy program. Um, but the undergraduates, our students will often uh, both go immediately into graduate school and they can go for a master's or a PhD and they are set up um, and accepted into graduate programs uh, uh, across the board. Um, we also have a lot of students who opt to take a little bit of time to work in the field. Um, today, we actually just have one of the things that we do run is an alumni panel. So we have students who from the last couple of years come back and kind of talk to our students about what their pathway was. Some of them had an immediate graduate degree. Others had some of the time off. Um, but they are, you know, they're given, they're able to talk to their advisors and decide what is the pathway that will work best for what they're interested in doing. So within the Marine Division, we also have the combined plan, the five-year plan, where you can earn your bachelor's and master's in five years. I think across the board, um, this is a, it's an opportunity, but it's really for just very few students um, to actually do this successfully. It really requires that you get involved in some research probably pretty early on. Um, you do need to declare this as a junior. You need a, a pretty high GPA. So for some students, it works out uh, really well if they know really kind of that career path that they uh, that that they want to aim for in a research project that they want to do for uh, their their master's degree. Um, but as I said, it requires getting involved in a research lab early on, having an advisor that's willing to work with you for this this program. Um, I tend to advise a lot of my students to really, you know, um, even though it sounds good um, sometimes to get, get both of these done as quickly as possible, when you're an undergraduate, uh, you have so many opportunities to try things out that you'll not get later in life. So again, while we offer these programs, um, for most students, I think I would advise them not, not to rush and to take advantage of their four years at, at Stony Brook 
and do multiple internships, multiple research experiences, and all of these other kind of uh, opportunities that, that we've talked about. One thing that we didn't mention, I think explicitly yet, and both Dr. Ryder and I can talk about this, is um, we have mentorship programs within SOMAS. Um, we have a uh, mentorship program through the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion program within SOMAS. And then we have a mentorship program within SWIMS, which Dr. Ryder can, can talk a, a bit more about. But both of these programs are designed to match students up upon their request with mentors, whether they're faculty members or graduate students. And they can mentor students, you know, in all aspects of their, their field, their career, but especially in preparation for graduate school. And then finally, before I maybe pass it back to Dr. Ryder, um, again, getting involved in the research labs, many of our, our undergraduates who have uh, projects within the labs that they kind of own, they often go to conferences, they make presentations, they network, they meet potential graduate school advisors. So again, many opportunities to prepare yourself well for graduate school and make yourself competitive for graduate school. And today, graduate school is quite heavily emphasized on that networking, on, on having made the connection with your advisor. And the experiential learning opportunities that students get as undergraduates helps to set up those future opportunities. Um, as Dr. Brush said, I am the advisor for SWIMS here at Stony Brook. And SWIMS is actually a national organization that was founded at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. And so within the SWIMS mentorship program, um, first of all, within SWIMS itself, we actually have members that are undergraduates, graduate students, postdoctorates, faculty. Um, and so we've set up both a SWIMS mentoring program through the Stony Brook community, but students can also be part of the larger SWIMS national organizations mentoring program, which has opened up some avenues for research and again, creating networks that will potentially lead to graduate opportunities along that way. So mentoring, whether it's in a, a formal setting such as the, the SWIMS mentor program, but also simply, I really strongly encourage students come talk to your professors during our office hours. And you will find that quite often many of us have students that we have become mentors to because we've had that personal connection with them. That was what I, I, I really had the pleasure today with so many of the alumni. They came back because I've stayed in touch with them, not only as undergrads, but I've remained in touch with them for the last five or 10 years. Um, and so these are networks that you're creating right from the very beginning. Our next question, we, we may have answered during the presentation, but it was asked very early on. Um, does Stony Brook have an on-site wet lab or other designated site for studying aquatic organisms? So yes, I, and I, I think we addressed that. Again, we can see the Southampton lab right behind me. Uh, it's about an hour uh, east of the main campus. It's just as you get onto the South Fork of Long Island. Um, that's kind of our, one of our larger facilities that has again running seawater. There's a lot of experiments being conducted there on everything from kind of harmful algal blooms to predator prey relationships to ocean acidification. Um, we also have the Flax Pond Lab, which was recent, recently renovated. And so that's a facility that will do a lot of kind of aquaculture experiments. We have the, the uh, Marine Disease Lab within SOMAS that also has experiments running, I think at both facilities actually. Um, so yes, we do have on the water um, uh, running seawater facilities too, actually within within so much plus our vessels as well. Thanks. So this is a very specific question, but I think kind of in a broader sense, the question is if I'm a different major in this case, computer science, and I am passionate about marine biology, I plan to minor in marine marine science. Um, how much access will I have to, you know, both the classes and the hands-on experiences and what sort of prerequisites would I need? But um, those would probably be covered by, um, you know, some of the general science and math courses, but just in general, like, does a minor have as much access as a major? So, so we're, 
we're taking in a lot of marine science students. Our, our program is uh, proving to be very popular. Um, so many of our upper level courses are, are filling with marine science students. And by that, I mean the, the majors, the marine science major, the marine vertebrate biology major, um, the environmental studies uh, majors. Um, but if you declare a minor, if you have a major in a different unit and you declare a minor, during enrollment, the enrollment sequence, you will have kind of higher priority to get into these classes. So um, I think the short answer is uh, yes, as a minor, you, you should have access to all of these courses at, as well. Um, we are trying to expand our courses, some of the enrollment in our courses. We're getting a few more resources to, to actually do that. So yeah, if you're interested in marine biology, um, but your primary major is something uh, that's not directly related being a minor will give you access to nearly all of these courses and certainly the opportunities. Um, again, many of these opportunities that we're talking about, the internships, the research, you know, they're kind of self-directed. You need to reach out first to the, the faculty members and we can help you do that um, and the potential internship um, institutions. Um, but yeah, you've got access to all those as well. I was about to say currently, because I work very closely with the, the New York Marine Rescue Center, um, two of my interns, one is a business major and one is a studio arts major. Um, and they're interning with, you know, within this kind of marine field because they are passionate about that as well. Um, one, it has a minor, um, one has not declared either a minor or a major. So you do have opportunities that are available to you. And again, please join the clubs too. I mean, that's another way to get involved. If you go, I don't quite want to have a whole major, I want to do a minor, or even just getting involved at a club level. Um, so this question, I think, is just something that does come up a lot because of the kind of confusion about having two campuses. But just to kind of clarify and reiterate, uh, students asking if they can go directly into their major to the Southampton campus if they've already decided their major. So just to clarify how where they where you start and where most students stay. <laughs> sure. The answer is no. <laughs> just to be crystal clear. Um, when you first arrive at Stony Brook, um, unless you're a transfer student coming in, and there's some, uh, sometimes if you've met the prerequisites at a different school and you're transferring in, you might be able to, to do the semester by the sea at Southampton. But uh, again, Nancy Black can assist you with that, SOMAS's undergraduate advisor. If you're coming in as a, as a freshman, kind of a traditional freshman, no, um, you should not expect to be at the Southampton campus for probably maybe a year and a half at, at least. Perhaps you can take some courses during the spring of your sophomore year. Um, but yeah, you should really plan on waiting until your junior or senior year. And again, you've got obligations at main campus and you want to take care of those first so you can be fully immersed at the Southampton campus and take all your classes down there. The exception to this is a course that I haven't talked about yet, um, but it's my summer oceanography course. I teach that at the Southampton campus. And it's our typical oceanography course that we have during the semester. It's condensed into two weeks in July. So you earn your three credits during those two weeks. We throw a few field trips in there that we don't offer at main campus. Um, so you could potentially take that course at Southampton during the summer, though. Um, you know, even before you arrive, there are, are a few seats left for this summer, actually, uh, this 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 July. Um, so that's an opportunity. That course is actually required now for our marine science majors. Not 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 the Southampton course, but just oceanography, introduction to oceanography. And we offer and that. And it actually course. fulfills several of our majors, um, either requirements or electives. Yeah. So we do offer oceanography at the main campus in the fall and the spring, but also at Southampton in the summer. And a follow-up question, um, does Stony Brook offer a semester at sea program or are we affiliated with one? Uh, so we do not offer one directly. However, um, you do have opportunities to do these types of uh, exchanges or through like the National uh, Student Exchange. We also work with SEA, the Sea Education Association. Um, and that is an opportunity to be on a, a, a research sailing vessel. Um, and you can be in the, the South Pacific. There, there's some incredible opportunities. And again, 
um, that is something that you may do, but it's not directly through Stony Brook University. So it's a matter of getting transfer credits. Let me, can I just uh, add something to the uh, the SEA, the SEA Education Association? So um, we, we work fairly closely with them. We typically have a student going to their program every year or so. And as Dr. Ryder said, um, you're doing marine science and you're sailing a tall ship in the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic or the Caribbean. Um, and they actually like our semester by the sea students because our semester by the sea students are really well prepared in terms of marine science, field work, maritime studies, and so on. So they actually offer a scholarship. You can actually get a $6,000 scholarship with SEA if you do our semester by the sea program first. So again, this is something we can talk about. This, is, this isn't anything that you'd want to do until you're likely a junior or senior again that that's um a c education association program but we'll be happy to chat with you dr Ryder or i or, and several of our other faculty members are very familiar with that program and we can help help get you there um uh, so this is a great kind of clarifying question because we have quite a few majors within the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, but the um, our guest is asking if atmospheric sciences and marine sciences are a combined degree or if they're two separate majors. They're they are two separate majors. So you're gonna major in atmospheric sciences or you can major in marine science or you can major in marine vertebrates or you can major in environmental studies with a concentration in marine science. Um, we also have a couple other concentrations within environmental studies. So we do have several majors. They are independent. Uh, we do also have minors. So some of our students will major in one of the SOMAS majors and maybe minor in something else or some double major, but they are separate majors. And we have a question that was specifically about our study abroad programs within SOMAS and if any of them are available freshman year. Very ambitious. Get 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 out there and travel right away, right? <laughs> uh, and that's great. We do have uh, so many different programs and I've had students go on multiple programs. They, they get the travel bug. Um, most of our summer programs uh, would be fine after your freshman year. Um, I do run a program to Ireland in the winter. It is uh, a history-based course, but because of my background, it tends to be heavily environmental. Um, that does not fulfill any of the SOMAS major requirements, but it does fulfill the SBC, the Stony Brook Curriculum General Ed requirements. So I actually get quite a few freshmen on that one. Um, we do take um, what we would call a rising sophomore, um, can go on the Tanzania program, can go to the Cuba program, um, and potentially could go on the Ireland or England program. Typically, those are more likely to be junior seniors. Same thing with tropical ecology in Jamaica. You're going to be more likely because of the, the background, the prerequisites going to be a junior or senior. Um, but again, there are many kind of avenues. We do have other programs um, that are not run by SOMAS faculty, but fulfill major requirements like the one in Madagascar. And that has taken freshmen um, during the, the, the summer after their freshman year. So you can travel pretty early on. And one thing I would like to say is if you're thinking about doing study abroad, we have some really great scholarship opportunities. So again, it's not something to stay away from because you think you can't afford it. Um, 29 out of my 30 students had scholarships. Um, and when I asked why the 30th, you know, what had he applied for? He hung his head guiltily and said, well, I just assumed I wouldn't get one. So he didn't apply. So again, study abroad is actually something very much within the reach of our students. And we have a, a question um, about some examples of courses taught in Southampton. Um, and are there opportunities for students in all the divisions or just some of the majors? Sure. So um, at Southampton, we teach courses that are mostly for the um, marine division majors. So the marine science major, the marine vertebrate biology major, um, and the ENS major. Um, but again, as we've talked about, if you have a minor uh, you'd be taking those courses out there as well. 
Um, so many of them are, are upper level kind of marine science courses like biological oceanography, physical oceanography, ichthyology, um, uh, chemical oceanography, although we also teach that up at the main campus, experimental marine biology, uh, marine conservation, uh, Long Island marine habitats. Uh, but we also have several courses, um, many of which uh, Dr. Ryder teaches, uh, that again, often have a lot of other majors in them. So uh, Maritime Traditions of New England, Coastal Cultural Experience course, um, Unsinkable Technologies is another course that, that she teaches in the spring. So most of the courses, like if you're looking at a full semester at Southampton, most students will be um, uh, marine division majors. Every now and then we've got an exception though. And uh, there's actually a full list of courses um, for the fall and spring semester. If you go to the semester by the sea or do a search, for semester by the sea or check out the Southampton campus websites, you can see kind of exactly what um, those two different semesters look like in terms of the, the classes. Um, uh, and so we have a question from a transfer student who's coming to Stony Brook as a sophomore marine science major and wants to know if there are any specific SOMAS courses that they missed or that they'd have to make up since their first year was spent elsewhere or if they're mostly gen ed prerequisite courses. Um. It depends on where you're coming from. This is, I think this is a question for Nancy Black. Again, most transfer students will meet with her right away. Um, again, SOMAS's undergraduate advisor. So I think that answer would 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 vary dramatically. There's there's not there's not one definite answer. The likelihood is you've got some of the classes and you might have others that you still have to kind of meet. It's there's a lot of different pathways here. Um, but again, you sh if you're concerned about being behind, I think if you're coming in your sophomore year, you, you should be in a relatively good place still. So I wouldn't in any way have like a, a, a panic that you're behind because you need to start at Stony Brook. Yeah. And during summer orientation, the advisors will look at your intended major and how your credits are transferring in, what courses you've already completed, and they'll kind of plug in you know, what you've done and what you've checked off and, and what you still need to do um, to get into a lot of your major specific courses. Um, so you don't have to kind of fret about that too, too soon. Uh, they will assist you with all of that. Um, I have a question about like what a typical semester is like, but I don't know if th that really exists for any students in college. Um, any any kind of way to answer that? <laughs> what you can do is if you go to the SOMAS website and you click on the major that you're interested in, what we have done is laid out kind of a possible way to look at your, your four years. So kind of giving you an idea of what classes you might choose to take on a kind of semester by semester, semester by semester basis. But there's a lot of options in there. Um, we can have students in, let's say, the marine science major, they take the same core and foundation classes, but they may take very different electives within that set. Um, so again, those things vary your, how you choose to do your um, SBC, your Stony Brook curriculum requirements, um, students fulfill them in different ways. So there isn't one, everyone is following the same path here. And that's actually one of the things that makes the the peer to peer interactions in classes and outside of the classroom, such as in clubs, so really kind of critical because you're getting to see what all of these different experiences are. Um, so we have a, a student who's wondering if they come to Stony Brook as um, one of the SOMAS majors, and then at some point they realize they want to be a different SOMAS major. How hard is that? Is that challenging? What what are some of the obstacles they might face? It depends on, again, it, the answer will vary depending on which major you're coming from and going to. Um, and again, it, this is a question I'd refer to um, uh, Nancy Black meeting with, with her. 
Um, as Dr. Ryder said, you know, many of the majors have the same prerequisites, the same kind of foundational courses. So we do see students switching majors. We, we certainly do that, uh, see, see that quite a bit, actually. Um, so again, there, there's no definitive answer here. Um, um, it, it's done, and it's done, you know, fairly commonly. I, hopefully that's helpful. And one of the things to keep in mind, not only do you have an incredible resource in Nancy Black, who is the undergraduate advisor for all of our SOMAS students, you also have faculty advisors for each of the majors. So in my case, I'm the faculty advisor for environmental studies. So I can sit with you and very closely go over, these are the classes you've taken, this is what you have, this is how it shifts. I do see a lot of students um, you know, shifting um, from say marine science to environmental studies or vice versa as they kind of decide which you know do they which pathway they want to go um, and we many of them are still able to graduate in a timely manner um, so it's a little bit of what have you done which way are you going and also when you make these decisions um, and kind of a similar question but um do you have a lot of students who double major either within or outside of the School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences? I, I think that's, I don't know if, if I'd say a lot, but I, I, I see it quite regularly. Um, again, students that are, you know, have, have um, uh, broad interests um, and exemplary students who can kind of take, take on quite a bit, um, they will often double major, um, double major with a, a minor as well. Um, and again, with careful planning, that that can that could be fairly straightforward. Again, meeting with all of your major advisors, with Nancy Black, setting up your four years and getting a plan. Many of the, as we said, many of the the foundational courses, the SPC courses, especially, you know, they translate to any major. Um, so you can fulfill those requirements. Um, um, yeah, so so yeah, I think Tara, do you have much more experience with this? But I not I uncommon. Don't. We do have I have quite a few students that are double majored within one of the SOMAS fields. We have, you know, I one of my students is an environmental studies major. She's graduating, but she's also graduating um with a degree in studio arts. So they can be both within ours and also, you know, well outside. And in her case, she combined it. So her final art project is all based on diving. So that's what her art was you know, based around. So many of them incorporate different elements of this. Um, again, it does take planning to make sure you're, if, if you're really, especially if you're focused on doing it in, you know, simply a four-year period, um, but it can be managed. I've had several students who started out with a major and minor and decided along the way that they loved the minor enough that they wanted to make that into a second major. And again, that often works quite smoothly um, you know, depending on what they've taken and where they are in their path. Well, I want to be the first <laughs> to thank uh, Kurt and Tara for such an uh, engaging presentation. I'm sure every one of our guests learned so much. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the session, the uh, recording will be available later this week on the Stony Brook University um, admissions YouTube page. So, and I posted the link in the chat. Um, we hope everyone who is first, you know, kind of exploring SOMAS uh, continues to do so. We'll have um, all kinds of additional programming in the fall semester. Um, campus tours for the summer will also be posted in the next few weeks. And for those of you who have been accepted and are making your final college decision, uh, we really hope you'll join us, um, you know, at Stony Brook in the fall. Um, good luck with your decisions. Congratulations on your admission. And we hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.